Well, should we just start? If you just, if you just, uh, for for people that don't know, tell us a bit about yourself, uh, your, like your history with Hyrox, and maybe what you were doing before that, and then and then we can get into it. For sure, my name is Rich Ryan. I'm a U.S. based athlete. Live here in Denver, Colorado. So I've been doing High Rocks for, I guess, a year and a half. My first race was in Orlando of 2020. was planning on doing, or no, 2021, right? Wait, wait. I forget. Some Probably 2021. Probably 2021. There was nothing happened in 2020. <laughs> yeah, so 2021 was the first race in Orlando. Uh, and I'd planned to do it once I first saw it come to the States at that Miami race. I was like, okay, this is definitely what... I want to train for, I want to go after, uh, I was doing the Spartan race circuit before that, because I felt that was the closest thing to having high end endurance with some strength mixed in, but ultimately like Spartan race is more trail running, mountain running and some grip strength. There's not really a huge strength component, so you don't really need to focus on it as much in training. And I, I, when I first got into OCR, I thought it was going to be more like what high rocks or like, like what deck of it, like this hybrid racing scene is. <clears throat> so once I saw that this was a thing that existed, I knew that's where I wanted to go because that's kind of what I was searching for from the beginning. I, uh, was a collegiate runner. I was pretty high, high level, uh, scholastic runner and ran in a division one school in uh, Philadelphia called St. Joe's like a mid-major. And after that, I got into the, I found the gym around 2008, nine, and then found CrossFit around 2011. So I, and that's when I just started mixing everything together, having some sort of endurance based training with the strength style, like the Metcon based, the, the moving in and out, the compromised running and, and, and just blending it all together. And I really felt like that was a fun way for me to train. So when high rocks and Decafit emerged in the past two or three years, I knew that's where I needed to go because I've kind of been training for that for, you know, 10 years now. Yeah. All right. But you're, so you're, uh, if we talk about like your performances in higher ops to date, you, you've gone from 108-ish initially, 108 in the, in the men's pro and down to uh, just over 60 minutes, right? Is the, is, is your best? Yes. I believe my, I believe that Orlando time was like 67 mid and then Chicago was like 68 and change. And then a year or six to seven months later uh, in Chicago, again, it was 60, 35. Okay. All right. Nice. It was about, and, about, a, and, about seven minutes in those six months or something. Okay. And uh, just for people that aren't aware, like uh, the world championships just gone in Las Vegas, you ultimately qualified for uh, the elite race and you finished seventh? Seventh. Just got in, got in their 15th spot and ended up in seventh. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. So uh, one thing uh, I, I wanted to talk to you about was I, I've been wanting to talk to someone for a while about just getting an idea how good you guys are. Like, obviously, we can we can see your times and anyone that's done higher ups like knows how good that is. But if we look at the individual components of, of what you do, like in terms of how strong you are, how fast you could ski, how fast you could row. Um, and I know it's going to be different for everyone, mm -hmm. but um, just to give people an indication of like, what it might take to to get into those elites um so and I, I know you could probably only speak for yourself and maybe a couple of the other guys that maybe you've trained with or something like yeah. that but um if we see so if we start from from a running side for example and i think you i think it's fair to say that you're one of the better runners in in that sort of elite group uh yeah i think even historically in my background and even currently some some athletes uh, Tom Hogan, for example, he, he's a very high level marathoner when he was running in his prime. I think he ran like 221 or something like that, something like extremely fast, but now he might, he might be kind of, uh, like he, his high end running isn't where it was. So I think where my background was and kind of where my high end running is currently, it's probably one of the top two or three All right. in, in, in so, the elite field. So if we, I mean, there might be some estimation needed here, but if we talk about whatever, 5k, 10k, half marathon, where, where would you say that you are right now um, in those? So in a 5K, probably somewhere in that 1540, 1535-ish range mm -hmm. uh, right now. And if I was able to kind of sharpen up, I could probably get into like 1515, 1510 at, at a certain level. So 10K, where, wherever that would be, I'm probably averaging – yeah, like five oh fives for ten k for miles on. I'm not now. I'm not, now I'm not speaking your language. I was saying I was 
talking all this junk like I was speaking your language with soccer and football, but now I'm over right, here talking got, about miles. I've got calculators up. I was like, he's going to start quoting miles and, hey, and uh, pounds uh, at me. So I, I'm ready for this. <laughs> okay, cool. I always I like to have my calculators up too. I'm like 2.2 divided by 315. Yeah, so uh, so I, I guess that would be maybe around 30. 32 flat for a 10 K. So like six, like two by 16 flats or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. And then for a half marathon. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to speak with this one. I probably averaging. Yeah. So you're going to have to help me out with the translation here. The probably around like five twenties per mile. Let's see. Okay. That's cool. And the 110, would that be right? What's that? Of oh, the time? Just under one hour ten. Yeah. Yeah, one one ten's about right. One ten I think would be about right. Yeah. So what is that? Three twenty per kilometers per yeah. kilometer. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. Okay. Three nineteen, three twenty per, per per kilometer. And how 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 are you how do you find that uh if someone if someone said to you, how fast should you run at high rocks based on my running time? Are, 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 would you say you're coming out around your your half marathon pace ish? Yeah. Yeah, probably, probably even a little bit slower, honestly. Yeah. Like that would be like five, if I ran, yeah, 320 per kilometer, like no one's doing that. No, no, no. Right. Everyone's closer to 345s, which would be, um, yeah, more toward like my marathon pace. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which would be, which would be like a two third. So even like a little bit slower, I've been under the... I've been under 30 minutes for the 8K a couple of times now. So that's, yeah, like, you know, 342s or something like that, which would be about a 236. And I think that 236 for a marathon. And I think that that would be slow <laughs> for a marathon for me. I'm probably be closer to like a 228 or so for a marathon. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting with the running because it is so much slower than what like my high end 5K would be where I could, you know, uh, I could run, um, yeah, three oh fives for a five k per kilometer, where I'm running three fifties sometimes in a high rocks. So it's 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 hard to know like where, like how much a five k is actually going to translate because you're still going to have that reserve reserve of speed available to you. So like a three fifty five would feel slower to me than it would to someone who has a sixteen flat. 5k for instance but it it does that even really matter when when it slows down that much are you better off just having a better marathon type pace or just a bit like a bigger endurance engine um so that's one thing i'm, I'm trying to kind of figure out like how much does a 5k matter and like a, a marathon like no one's going to test a marathon <laughs> or even like i think a half marathon would be a little bit too much to test or to train for or to run a race while doing high rocks training uh but it can give you a general conversion of the two um so i'm really not sure i'm really not sure like how much that matters okay and, and so you mentioned your running times um is that if, if you wanted to be in the elite 15 like how much what where would you need to be would you do you feel like you'd need to be roughly at those standards um i think where i am is probably faster than what you'd really need to shoot for I think if you, I, I honestly think if your 5k could be like 1630, I think that that's enough. I think there, are, I, I bet there, are, I'm willing to bet there was guys in that field who 1630 would be about as fast as they could run for a 5k. About 10, 10, 10k is probably a better indicator, right? Is it, it so what you're talking about, 34? Yeah, that would be, yeah, 34. Yeah, that's about 530s. I would say, yeah, that's fair. 34 sub 34 would be a good place to shoot okay okay and that's uh, i guess we're talking we, we should say we're talking on the men's side here right do, yes do, do, do you have a feel for the women's side or where, where they're at or not the, for them it's just so the top end athletes are just so varied yeah that there's not who, who do you think the fastest female in the field is uh I'm not sure. I think I think Chris is probably up there, isn't she? She's really not that fast in it. Like a 10k, she can just grind for 
forever. <laughs> like, but like her high end, like fitness in terms of 5k, 10k, I don't think she spends a lot of time there. So I don't, I wouldn't put her. Okay. Maybe Viola. Viola seems to be pretty, a pretty good, pretty fast runner. Uh, how fast does you think Linda, Linda is in like a 5k, 10k? She has to be pretty fast. Yeah, she told me the other day that her the pace she runs at is somewhere between a ten k and a half marathon pace. Actually, that she she's doing in high rocks. Um, and if you can do if you can do that, like that, mean, and then the stations aren't taking that much out of you. Like that, yeah. I think is ideal. So like the stations are probably killing me a little bit more, like where my high end running is and how slow it it ends up making me run like slower than my marathon pace. That's probably something that I need to show up in my training where on Linda's side, if she can run that fast and do the stations at like a, an okay clip, like her fitness overall is like really strong for high rocks. Yeah. In, in Vegas, Chris had the quickest run time. Um, I mean, it, it depends how you cope with, with that sort of distance and, and all the other stuff going on, but yeah, Chris was the quickest and uh, Tara had the second quickest. Interesting. Yeah. Cause Tara has a running background as well but yeah there's not was third yeah she was elantra was third really because she doesn't yeah. have a background in running like at all and viola ran that extra lap though right uh yes of course yeah 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 she and was lauren and lauren and rachel were you know pretty pregnant <laughs> at the time <laughs> yeah 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 uh yeah i mean viola was 35 minutes though and chris was like 32 17 so there's more than that 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 lap in there um, so probably the way to do this <clears throat> is to have your 8k like that should probably be your your metric and then being able to compare how fast your high rocks 8k was to your actual 8k and what the percentage difference would be mm -hmm. so if someone like like for me i'm probably 15 to 20 percent slower where it sounded like linda was probably like four to five percent slower so i think that's probably the main indicator there like and so ideally you'd want your 10 your 8k to be faster and faster and faster but also bringing along that strength work or compromised compromised running work with it as well so to make sure that you can reach your out maximum output under duress like during the race so that's probably the real indicator i mean that's i know it sounds like that's that's obvious like how well you can run but i think knowing what your AK is, is probably going to be your best bet. Yeah. And well, I guess what we might see over time, just thinking off the top of the head, there's people train more specifically for high rocks, as opposed to having come from a, a running background. You might see that like, you know, it is much closer. Like maybe they can go much quicker than their half marathon pace. Like I don't know. I fancy tackling a half marathon, you know, personally. Um, so I suspect I'm much quicker than my half marathon pace. Like someone like, uh, I think like a Dylan Scott or even like a, a Tim Vinish, like those guys don't strike me as particularly fast runners, but they're running in high rocks seems fast, you know, mm -hmm. but if I was to line up next to them in a 5k or 10k, I don't even think we'd be in the same race, like it, it, because of the difference in paces. So yeah, I think that yeah. yeah, like the percentage of what your 8k would be, I think is the best way to figure that out. Yeah. All right. So uh, if, if we move away from running like uh, on ski erg, where are you at? What, what, what are you pulling for whatever, a, a K or 2K on the ski? So I've been doing uh, 2K has been my metric for that. I'm around 701 for uh, 2K right now, which is like 145s Okay. Um, for per 500. And I think that that's a fair, and that's, that's with some improvement. I think in the past, I was probably closer to 730 which, mm -hmm. you know, was probably on the slower end. I think a lot of the, the guys at least are going to be around 650 to 710 is what I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, someone like Hunter, he comes in, he can pull his thousand faster than my 2K pace. Like at, during a high rocks, he pulls like 140, 141. You know, it's wild. Like, <laughs> like it's, like it, it's going to be hard to, to find somebody like that. So like, I even think like one where most of the top guys in their in the their ski are probably going to be pulling between one yeah one forty five and one fifty I think yeah yeah that's what I thought you were going to say so, so is that in a race is that what you're doing you're 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 doing about your two k pace I might try that this year because it's improved so much but it probably still going to be a little bit slower probably like one forty eight I've in the past I've been like one fifty one fifty one and that's just yeah. like a spot where it's like yeah, I can gain some ground, 
but it's not really going to make or break a difference in that race. Yeah, it's a balancing act with the ski, right? You, you, a few seconds quicker can can kill you too early, right? Yeah, I think on the women's end, I think the fastest that we'll see is like too flat. I think someone like Alondra will will pull too 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 flat for five hundred, uh, and I think most of the high end women are going to be between two hundred five and two hundred seven. Yeah, for yeah. so what that means for their two k, yeah, they're probably just under that eight minute or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven highs. Okay. And and rowing, let me might as well stand the ergs. <clears throat> what you, you, you looking at your two k for that as well? Ah, yeah, I haven't done a great job of <clears throat> spending time on the rower as it was more of a strength in my ski when I first got into it. So I really put a large chunk of time trying to improve my ski. On my row, my two k is not much faster than my ski. I was actually going to test a two k today, so I'll. I'll send you a clip later. You can edit it right into this spot okay, when, nice. you know, uh, <laughs> but, uh, so I'm, I'm just under seven minutes for my row. That was like a year and a half, two years ago when I did that, which I think is a little bit slow. So again, like right around 145 is 144 high. I think most of the guys probably be around 140 for, uh, for per 500 for 2k. I think Dylan just did a 5k at one at 144s. So I like which is pretty nasty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then, uh, so in the race again, like are you, are you, is that what you're, is that what you're pulling at? Uh, a little slower, probably six to seven seconds per slower. I've been interested if you crunch this data before. I've found just anecdotally looking at the, the ski versus the row that the times and paces are actually kind of the same but just because the row is so much further into the race it slows people down so much so i so for me i'm if i, I usually try to ski at 150 and by the time i get to the row i'm at like 150 and that's kind of what i can sustain like anything mm-hmm. faster is like too much i don't think guys get and like hunter's the same hunter's around 140 on the rower i think most guys are gonna like dylan i think he's like 147s on the rower and kind of the same on the ski so it'd be interesting have you have you looked at that data at all uh, no, like it gets skewed a little bit because like you, you can't look at, it's not pure just time on the erg, is it? It's like getting in and out and like the rower takes that little bit extra. Um, That's true. So it's, it's a little bit harder to compare. But yeah, if I think about myself personally, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, you're right. I probably, I probably ski a little bit slower than what I row at, um, but, but not much at all. Yeah. yeah, I guess you're right. The data for what you have to pull off the website might not be right. You probably have to add. I usually, what do you assume? Like, 10 seconds per station for transition. Well, it depends well, it on the, depends, depends too. Yeah, it depends like, I think 10 seconds, maybe a little less on the ski is fair, but you know, you've got to get out of the rower and, uh, and so on. So and what the rock little, zone looks like, what it's laid out. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A bit harder. All right. So from a, a, a straight side, um, what are you like? If we talk about maybe deadlifts and squats to give an idea of how, how strong you are, but what are you doing for those, like one rep max or three rep max, something like that? Yeah, those are those are seem to be the easiest ones. You know, like uh, I, I feel like the probably the best indicator would be like what your max uh, three meter sled push and pull would be, you yeah. know, but just based <laughs> off everyone's sleds are different, the floors are different. Sled talk, man, we could talk about sled for <laughs> a long time. But uh, so squat and deadlift seem to be the main metrics that I'm that I try to go after. Uh, so my squat is 325. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Calculator's out. So like 147 and 148 kilo uh, back squat, and then sorry, was that, that that's one rep, yeah, one rep yeah. for one, yeah, yeah. and then. My deadlift is 407, so 185 for deadlift. Okay. 95 kilos for deadlift. Um, where would you put yourself in, like, at like, your, like, the Elite 15 at, in Vegas? Where, are you, where, where do you think you stand in that middle of the road? For those numbers, those flat numbers, probably middle and deadlift. Some dudes who are just, like – you know, like gorilla strong, <laughs> like you can just kind of pull a deadlift and not like have much technique or form probably middle of the road in the deadlift. I'd be like hunters up toward 500. He's up over 500, uh, pounds. 
Um, so he's at like, you know, 227 kilos. Ryan, Ryan Kent's around 450 for his deadlift. So he's around 205 for, and I, I know like the bigger dudes like Michael Sambach, he's probably in that mix too. I would imagine someone like Martin or Alex Ronkovic, they're probably right in that mix too. It's so probably middle of the road on that. On the squad, I kind of think I'm on the higher end. I probably put myself in the top quarter uh, just because it's not some like, form comes a little bit more of a factor in for back squat as well. So I would say that's, that's a good place to shoot for. Uh, I'll probably like right there. And in terms of what, where would you say like Dylan is, for example, like presumably he's, he's lifting less. Um, I would say Dylan probably can do it. Like can probably pull 360 if he's fresh. So like 162 to 163 kilos on a deadlift, mm-hmm. you know? So I think he's, a, he's probably stronger, than you than you'd think than what he'd look like i don't know how strong like tim would be either you have any idea uh, no i'm not sure but i have heard a couple of people say like he's like surprisingly strong um i believe it he's yeah. he's bigger than he actually looks like when like on the course i don't know if because he's around bigger dudes but i think he's probably more bigger and muscular than even tobias yeah what do you think tobias could pull on a deadlift i, I don't know I, i've no idea like I've, I don't know, like maybe 159, 158. Yeah. I don't know. He just has a huge engine. Dylan too, you know? I think this, I think like for the people watching, I think, I think that's probably quite encouraging, right? Like uh, that there is such a, there can be such a range in, in just a group of 15 guys. Like we've talked about uh, whatever, like probably a range of like 60 kilograms there. Yeah. Um, you know, whatever that is, 130, 140 pounds, just, just on the deadlift. Um, I think so. And a guy, when you see a guy like Hunter, and he might actually be the anomaly in this, and he might not be the roadmap that people need to follow to get good at high rocks. I mean, it, cause it's, he's just been able to pour himself into it and he's been a professional athlete literally for a long time. So he want, he was able to put on a bunch of muscle and get bigger at with while increasing his engine to do so, where it seems like a lot of the athletes are doing it based off of engine alone. So like, like a Tim, like a, uh, like a Tobias, like a Dylan, you, you can work, you can improve your work rate to the level where you don't need to have to have a 500 pound deadlift to perform because I'm not, because again, with the sleds, I'm not even sure if that's, I, that might be overkill. Yeah. You might not need that. Yeah. 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 Sure. Um, and then I guess the other sort of element to, to the race is like muscular endurance, really. Mm-hmm. Um, probably a little bit harder to define. Uh, um, I don't know if you've got any thoughts. I was thinking about like, what would your like max unbroken wall balls be? The, the, um, the yeah, 20, uh, 20 that's a good ball, one. Right? 20 pound, 20 pound ball. So the, there's a good um, CrossFit benchmark workout. It's called Karen. It's just 150 wall balls for time. And I think if you're under like six minutes or something like that for that, you're in a pretty good spot. Like uh, I do like Dominic Malzahn, who was second European championships last year. Like he can do wall balls unbroken. He could probably be close to uh, like under five, like 450 for something like that. Someone like Mirham Van Roor, same thing. She could probably do her 150 wall balls in four, 450 and change. Like I can do, if I was fresh, like I can do hundred wall balls unbroken. Like that's not necessarily the issue with that. But the one, the one fifty, I'd probably be right around, you know, five minutes, five ten, or something. Mm-hmm. So I, I do think that that's a good metric, though, having that one hundred fifty wall balls for time. For time, okay. Yeah. What do you do, do? Do you have a feel for what like would would you be one of the slower ones, one of the faster ones at that that's that sort of time for one fifty? Do you think? Uh, I probably on the faster end for that, just based off of I think that might be where a squat, like a heavier squat, would would be able to translate into the race just based on form alone. Like I think a lot of wall balls is just like the, like reaching depth and being efficient in and out of the squat position and being able to drive through your hips. Uh, that's what I found. Like a lot of, there's like a lot of people using extra movement and just doesn't look smooth coming up and down. I'm probably on the faster end of that just cause I of my cross, I have a CrossFit background and I can, I've spent a lot of time doing squats. So I would say like, yeah, I'm probably around five minutes for 150. It's probably, top four to five but at the end of the race i'm, I'm middle of the pack <laughs> just because my my I, I i've ended up there's been times where i've had a hard time like in chicago in 
the North American championships, I had a good set of wall balls. I was like 350 something, like 352 for uh the end of the race. And but in Vegas, I was like 430 and just had a hard time. So that it's like, how is your global fitness coming together? Because even if you have awesome wall balls, like if you're just beat by the end, it's not gonna matter as much. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, sure. Any any other any other indicators from that perspective that you think are worth talking about, or is the wall balls the best one? Like walking lunges, anything like that? I haven't really figured out a way like the walking lunges or like the burpee broad jumps, for example. That to me is almost just a matter of hitting enough volume throughout the week to making sure that that's not just not going to kill you. I don't know. I don't know if like doing a hundred walking lunges for time is going to be that helpful. I don't think it could hurt, but I don't really have any numbers on it that were like, like, I don't know, like 200 meter burpee broad jump or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> have you thought about that at all? Do you have any idea? No, like no, no, I must admit I'm not like, no, and it's, it's, I, I wondered about the lunges. Like you could look at someone's hundred meter lunge time, but like fresh versus where you are at in the race, it, it, like it's, it's a completely different ball game, really. In it, so that and Burby Broad just probably has more to do with like training hours spent per week. I would think just based off of like total amount of work that you're doing, like and how it's split between strength and endurance. So I would imagine someone who's spending, you know. 12, 14, 16 hours of training will probably have a better lunge and a burpee broad jump than someone who's doing six to eight, you know, just based off of total like endurance and the amount of volume that you're putting in. So I think that's probably a better indicator than just like, yeah, like a three rep max reverse lunge or something like that. I don't know. Hunter, Hunter did put up a post a few months ago, actually talking about some of this sort of stuff. He, he put, he said hundred meter walking lunge, with the 65 pounds, which is the 30 kilograms, men should aim for sub three and a half minutes. His best score is 245. I was thinking three minutes. Yeah. Like that's the, what popped into my head. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. That's, that's, that's useful. That's interesting. Thank you. So if, if, can we talk about uh, like training volume? Uh, like how, how much, how much are you putting in a week? Um, I mean, I don't know, running volume. If we start at like, what you're doing in a week. Yeah. So I would be around, so I, I, I switched from yeah doing miles. I still have an idea of where I am in terms of uh, miles per week. Um, then, uh, but more of like toward hours. So, and then there's like the mixed mo modality stuff, which I'll probably just put as endurance work. So I, I'm going to be around 12 to 14 per week, depending on the type of the time of the year and where I am with my training block and where I'm in, in terms of like the next race I have. Sorry, so like right, 12 to 14 hours, hours. in yeah, terms of aerobic work. Like that's, 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 uh, that's, that, is that that's total. Cool. That's total. So yeah, that's, that's with my strength work as well. Right. So right, right. usually three hours of that will be around strength. And then the rest will be some sort of, uh, like aerobic development or anaerobic running and or energy or we'll just call that energy system work where it's like yeah. aerobic aerobic capacity uh lactic tolerance lactic threshold anaerobic capacity work like we'll just call that all um uh what did i just call it it was exactly what i wanted to call it but i just forget now uh energy energies. development <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so energy development work is probably nine hours per week and then everything else and then the strength is probably three uh, and that's usually a good spot for 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 me in terms of how like i in terms of just like the way it fits into my life with how much time i have yeah, yeah. um i think how old, how old are you now can i ask yeah 36 36 all right mm -hmm. would you say that's like if you were 22 would you do you think you could be putting in more volume or, or, or you'd still be around the same? I think if I was 20, like eight, like 22 is pretty young still. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, to kind of like build up. So it's still probably on that on that trajectory up, like where I was able to get better results off of less volume when I was younger, just because uh, I was just a little bit more fresh. And now as I've gotten older, I've been able to kind of build year over year to get to this place. But yeah, if I was like 28, 29, 30, I could probably, I would definitely be able to put in more. Mm -hmm. But like, it's not necessarily a matter of uh, how much I'm feeling, just like how it fits into my day. Yeah, yeah, you know? sure. 
And that's one thing with this. I think that you could put in a ton of work. I think you could put in like 20, 25 hours of, of work in this because of all the different domains that you can like go after. Yeah. But you don't have to, right? But- you don't have to, but I think like, we're going to see some crazy stuff in this sport down the road. Like even last year, Hunter doing like 55, like that's nuts. Right. Mm, I think there's going to be a slew of athletes who are going to be in that 55, 56 in the next five or six years, just based off of like building up that volume, figuring out what works best. Uh, But I think the volume is ultimately what's going to drive the top end performers higher, but like you could do really well off of like eight, seven, eight, 10 hours a week. Mm Mm-hmm. What, uh, like say your nine hours of energy development, what, what proportion of that is running versus bike, ski, row? So let me see. That's a good question. Um, so usually I would say about six to six hours of that, six of those nine hours is, or probably seven of those nine hours would be running. And with some of that being mixed with running and like, skiing, biking, rowing, like kind of, or the sled, like moving in and out of the station work as well. But like probably, yeah, 75% of it or so Mm -hmm. would be based around running. Okay. Okay. In terms of like the, 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 the physical attributes of an elite 15, um, height wise, weight wise, would you say there's a, like a really good, good variance i've seen people talk before about oh i think it suits people that are taller more or shorter or heavier or runners more and so on and when i actually think about the elite 15 i actually think like it's a good mix i think it shows that there's quite a good it's quite a good like it is quite a hybrid event because there is such a good mix between you guys would, would you agree with that i would agree with that i would agree with that like <clears throat> like again people look at hunter as like the beacon here it's like but no we're not all going to be six two 195 at like eight, seven or 8% body fat. Like it's just going to be hard for people to get there. And, but then you see someone like Tobias, right? Like Tobias, he's probably, how tall is he? Six foot, six one? Uh, <laughs> at least I think. Yeah. I, I don't know. I've, been, I've never actually met him. So I'm not sure. But, but like, I would say he's probably um, at most, we think 79, 80 kilos. Yeah. Maybe. And like probably more by body, percentage body fat than Hunter. He's probably like 10. 11 maybe even so <clears throat> it does vary i think there's going to be a certain level like if you're if you're six foot like uh i'm over here with my calculator if you're six foot like 70 kilos like 155 you're probably gonna have a hard time you know i think that might be a little like for for the pro to push that pro weight i, I i'm trying to figure out like where a good spot is this too like i think a good like a good frame that is sustainable for a lot of people would be like what a Ryan Kent looks like, what a David McGee looks like, what a Michael Sandbach, what he's like, he's Mike, Michael Sandbach's about six foot and he's uh, um, the, all those guys are closer to 86, 85, 86 kilos. which is like about like 190. So I think if you can be that big and be able to run, I think that that it would be an ideal spot. I think that's a spot where you can still run pretty well for that size. Um, in terms of taller shirt, how how do you think the like <clears throat> this week in New York's gonna be interesting? There's this guy, his name's Jared Newby. He's gonna do really well. He did you follow the Go Ruck games at all that happened over here? Uh, not that closely, no. no. They, they didn't do. They didn't really broadcast it. But like, it ended up being they they basically took like there was like fifty men, fifty women, and they they did a bunch of events and they took the top eight and they t- and they put the top eight and then they kind of did like a tournament format uh, to to this like to, to get to the final. The final was really stupid. It was wrestling really stupid <laughs> a full fitness event at the end wrestling cool so <laughs> at the end of it it was like guys like hunter brent hastrit um cole schwartz uh there was two or three other like straight up high rocks athletes in these top eight so it was like really really kind of showing that like okay like this event and like this strong fast endurance like mixed modal stuff like the hybrid people doing high rocks doing deck are the ones that are uh, that are doing well in this. There's a guy named Jared Newby who was in it and he ended up finishing second to Hunter because he doesn't know how to, how to wrestle, but he's six, four and he's going to be doing high rocks this weekend. You guys do sent you guys do centimeters, right? I don't know if I have that calculation, um, but he's tall. <laughs> he's like two, two inches taller than Hunter. So um, how do you think that would help do, do that would help or hurt on the sleds being uh... that tall? 
I don't, I, I don't think it matters too 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 much. I mean, no, I don't. I, I don't see it matters. No. Unless uh, I guess, I guess if they if they're quite low and they you've got to get low down, then then you might be putting more through through your thighs, um, potentially. But then if you've got the weight behind you, it, you that's know, the thing, so. right? Yeah, it, it would probably move like if you get down, it probably moves your hips and your feet further away from that weight the of the sled, which I think matters. But he's also two hundred pounds. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. you could probably just lean right into it. But maybe taller is better. Taller is better for the machines, the ski, the row, the wall balls. It'd be worse for the lunges. It'd be worse for the burpee broad jumps. Um, it's probably skewed to favor tall people more, but it's not all tall people um, yeah. stations, I would say. So I think okay. like, yeah, 5'11", 6'1", 6'2", is a good height for the men's side. On the women's, on the women's it really varies. Lauren's not tall. Miram's not tall. Chris is like medium, like average height. Alondra's a little tall, but we don't, there's no women that are extremely tall on, on that are doing it at the elite level. I don't think. Is Camilla tall? She's tall. She's probably 5'10", 5'10", 5'11". She's very tall. Okay. Yeah. So a, a good mix, really. It's uh, a good mix. Yeah. 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 It oh. is. I'm, height, height probably matters less than weight, I would say. Okay. Thanks for your time today. I think we, we we can probably wrap up there. Do you want to tell people about what you do? You do you do some coaching. You work with people and, and plans and so on. Yep, do some coaching. Got some a uh, couple one on one spots open. Not a ton, but yeah, a lot of people were getting prepared for this high rock season. There's some group coaching that we do uh, at um, where just kind of generally getting people prepared and we'll build up a. a building a taper for high rocks and for deca if that's something that you're interested in and one on and one off plans so if you want a 12 12 week eight week high rocks plan we could do that for you as well um everything's at reinforced running it's reinforced underscore running underscore rich on instagram uh reinforced running podcast uh rich ryan on youtube which is a lot of uh which there's a lot of like hybrid content on there. A lot of like to do, like how to do the burpee broad jumps and things like that and then race brain podcast is more of a uh, talk sports talk show, I guess you would say around the sport of hybrid and, uh, OCR, if you're interested in, in talking about that, talking about and hearing about that stuff. All right. Awesome. All right. Brilliant. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Cool. Greg. Appreciate it. Thank All you. Right. Take care, everyone.